let's make beauty and let's give praise and thanks and be awake to the fact that this is a crazy miracle and deeply mysterious that we're all able to live and breathe on a rock floating through space. Like, let's just, let, let's make sense of that through the art we make. That would be cool. Um, and try to avoid anything that takes away from the, the miracle and mystery of that. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Andrew Garfield is an actor. He sat down with me in cyberspace to talk about the work. Andrea Riseborough was on the show and she talked about this guy, Andy Garfield, that she <laughs> was in plays with at the National. And I was, yeah. I was thinking, who is this Andy Garfield guy? <laughs> who, who is Andy Garfield? And like, for a second, I was like, oh. So what is your preparation process like now that's different from Andy Garfield's preparation process that she knew from back then at the National? Oh, wow. It's very, very different. And uh, I'm happy to say some things have remained. There's one thing that comes to mind that has remained, um, which is now integrated into my process, whereas before it was a terrible disruption to my process. Um, and that is a period of, of absolute fear and terror and self-loathing and a kind of experience of feeling like I'm going to internally or externally combust if I step foot on the set or on the stage, feeling like I'm about to die if I continue in rehearsals, feeling like I have literally nothing to offer. And uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm happy to report that um, in learning that that, phase that that moment that day that hour or two or a week however long it lasts how long however long that spirit visits for it it hasn't gone anywhere and um it feels like a strangely vital aspect of the process mm. and I, I but, but, and i can only say that because it hasn't gone anywhere if it's if it went somewhere i'd be able to say oh yeah i got over that fuck it but actually i've had to incorporate it as I'm on the right track. If I'm feeling this amount of, I can't do it. I'm not enough. I can't match this. I, uh, if, if that's, if that happens now, I'm oddly reassured by it. It means mm. that it matters. It means that what I'm doing really matters to me. It means that I'm going to expand and I'm going to stretch and I'm going to grow. It means that it's going to be dangerous. It means that it's going to be, um, uh, there's going to be a, a vulnerability which is necessary when doing this work, so I'm 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 grateful for it now. Uh, I say that retrospectively, of course, because I'm not in it right now in the thick of the throes of that choppy ocean. Um, so that's remained. <laughs> I'm just better at, at at rolling with it. But a lot of things have 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 changed. I I think when I was Andy, oh, I still am Andy. That's but but back in that moment, I was. I was doing four plays at once when I was working with the wonderful Andrea, the geniusly talented, almost alienly talented Andrea Riseborough. She's so brilliant. And I'm, I'm flattered that my name came up in her talk with you, but when we were working together, I was doing, we would, we were in rep, which means lots of different plays at one time under the same roof at the national theater. So I was doing four plays. She was, she was in, I think either two or three and, so I, and it was, and I was, you know, 19, maybe 20, 21. And it was just flying by the seat of my pants and trying to, mm, in, it was very instinctive. I, I had a really great bag of tools from my time at drama school and what I was kind of developing in myself. But now I would say, I don't, think i wonder whether whether i will have another phase of working that way a very very just purely instinctive very busy no mm -hmm. not much time for much, any left brain activity mm -hmm. just really having to come up against the moment and see what i can find um and kind of an energy of excitement about what i can discover but now i really enjoy long prep i really enjoy research i really enjoy long rehearsal i really enjoy the period before stepping on stage or, or, or walking onto set because it's um there's uh 
there's no results needed. There's no getting there, which is true for performance. But suddenly when performance comes, that it, it takes on a different energy and it takes on, there, there are different needs that come into play. Whereas in rehearsal and in research and prep, you get the privilege of empathically, imaginatively exploring a whole nother psyche or a part of your psyche that you didn't know existed, a way of moving, a way of being in the world, a whole culture sometimes. Um, you know, for instance, working on Scorsese's film Silence, I had a year steeped in Jesuit history. I had a year to research and uh, viscerally understand as best I could what it was like to live in you know, in the 1500s in, in Portugal and what it was like to be a missionary in, in you know, the hidden Christian missionaries of Japan, like, it, it, like that shit. I mean, how I, I could have done that forever. Like there's so much to know and there's, and it's absolutely fascinating. So I would say that's changed. Um, I would say I, I've, I've been through different phases of um, control and release, control and release. There are periods of, of, of time where I've, I've lent, I've gone too far towards attempting to control something. So I've had to go back towards um, allowing something to be what it is or what it wants to be and kind of getting out of the way. And then I've mm. potentially gone too far that way of getting too much out of the way. And it's, mm. so, so there's no getting there either. So that I find that dance kind of interesting. But wait, I, I need to ask about that. Like, and, and you're talking about still in the preparation process where you were, you, you were kind of wrapping your arms too closely to something where it wasn't, uh, it wasn't letting itself work mm. in you. Is that what you mean? I th no, I think that's more about in performance when it, when oh. it comes to performance and the energy yeah, shifts yeah, yeah, and yeah. suddenly, right, right, suddenly, right. you know, daddy's voice in your head is going, are you going to get the gold medal? Suddenly it becomes, right, um, right, right. it becomes okay, a sporting gotcha. event, which is anathema to art, obviously, and creativity. It kind of shuts down major parts of the brain and the body and the, and yeah. the heart because you're, you you become much more narrow. And sometimes that that's helpful for a particular, you know, like for instance, that, that aspect of myself was really helpful when I was in the intense war scenes in, in Mel Gibson's film, Hacksaw Ridge, like that kind of single focus, narrow field of vision mm -hmm. became very, very useful. But I, and, you know, in, in the in-between moments, I, I needed access to a much more expanded consciousness mm. where um, mystery could, could happen and things could come mm. in, you know, because obviously that character was a man of faith and faith is mystery. God is mystery. And, and all of those things had to be um, welcomed. And I, I had to not know where I was going in, in multiple, multiple moments mm -hmm. like that. But tell me what that year with mm. father Martin tangibly did for you because because for for me like I, I i saw that film opening morning with one of my best friends who's a in the seminary mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i took that film in in a way that mm -hmm. you know was very powerful a, a lot of that had to do with you and your performance but what was it though that you needed during that time and how did that um work within you when you're doing the narration, talking about Jesus's face, and it, mm -hmm, it, it mm -hmm. comes up, it, it's, I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe it, this wouldn't have been as powerful if you hadn't gone through what Father Martin asked you to go through, and you, you lived it, and you, you know, and as you talk about it, like you, you actually fell in love with Jesus in a way. Mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. that. I think that that mystically works in there for me as an audience member. Mm -hmm. But could that have happened if you? if you didn't have that year with him <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the brilliant that's the beauty of it like i said you know someone else could have just shown up and had you know and and it would have been what it would have been like it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter in a way for for me no for me it's what i wanted to do and it's what i it's how i wanted to approach it because that's where my curiosity lies i suppose and my love and my following following my bliss leads me in a, in a way that that you know is, is different for me than for others so no it's not it's neither better nor worse but i don't know it, it could have been I, I i honestly don't know i who there's no way of knowing i did it the way i wanted to do it and 
or the way I felt called to do it. And the and it, cause I felt with that, with everything, a tremendous responsibility. Yes. And it's, and it just so happens that I, I love, I love this stuff. And I, and I love, you know, we're in a, we're in a, in a life that is full of, uh, uh, opportunity to create things that are meaningless or to have meaninglessness, um, meaningless experiences or experiences that don't have potency or experiences that are kind of shallow and superficial and a kind of, uh, you know, commercial oriented, I'm talking about in terms of just living. Um, and for me, any opportunity I get to connect in a deep way, I'm going to, I, I just, I think I'm, I'm no different to anyone else really in that regard. Like we all want that deep connection to whatever it is we are, we are doing or whatever it is the day is bringing us. There's nothing, nothing worse than feeling disconnected from life. So for me, uh, acting and story is a way of really feeling as finding my sense of belonging in being alive and my connection to other people, my connection to life itself, um, my connection to history, my connection to, you know, to, 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 to this very mysterious thing um, uh, that happens between birth and death. And it's like that if I, whatever, I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a, a book of uh, Van Gogh paintings, who's my favorite, um, uh, one of my favorite painters and favorite artists generally. And, how remarkable it is that he was someone who was so uh, misunderstood and not perceived, not seen, kind of uh, disregarded in his time. And yet he, thank God, continued to just connect with his version of life and his unique way into seeing and being and expressing what, it, what his uh, experience was of being alive. Without that, we without you know, if if he had been reliant on someone telling him good job or if or, or please carry on, he had a he had a he had a calling and a and a compulsion to to do what he needed to do, and it 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 was painful for him being so misunderstood. It seems, and of course for all of us, but thank God he did it because now you know we're left with uh so, such beauty and such a lens mm. of um of, of new ways of seeing and, and connecting into you know and remembering that everything is connected i think that's what he could see that dissonance the mm. kind of um the vibrational kind of disturbance in the atmosphere made everything it, it, it was it was an awareness that he had that everything was interconnected that we were all just molecules um, vibrating at different levels and paces and 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 how actually there is no separation between me and the chair there's no separation yeah. between me and the air me and you know it's i think you know what i'm getting at yes for you this seems like it's and you and you said this at one point you have to be in a, a place in your life where that is going to serve the peace in order for you to feel like the work is worth getting up in the morning and going to. You said something like that once. Yeah, yeah, that's a good paraphrase, yeah. So, I, I mean, I can understand how that helps you mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and your journey as a person. Yeah. Uh, but how does it help the piece? Yeah, I think maybe a, a, if, I, if I could put, put it more precisely or better, maybe generally, it would be like, Am I called to this? Am I, yeah. is it, is it going to be a mutually beneficial thing for yeah. me and this piece, for me and this work, for me and this story? Um, is, is, do I have to go there? It's like two, two different types of fear, right? One fear is you're about to step in the middle of the street and a bus is coming and the fear is saying, get the fuck out of the way and step back so you don't get hit by the bus. And then the other type of fear is, Oh fuck! I actually have to go there. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I experience it when I find when when there's a story that I need to do. It's a need. It's a calling. It's it's not um. There's nothing casual about it. It's mm -hmm. uh. It's very. It's very um. You just feel it in your body, and uh, it's um for whatever reason, it, and it may may have something to do with where you are in your own where I am in my own life, or it may have something to do with something that I've. Uh, 
had experience in that I want to bring into the work, or it may be just an imagined, like for instance, like when I read Under the Silver Lake, that was, I was like, oh yeah, I have to do, I don't know why, but I have to do this. This feels, and I didn't fully understand what the film was when I first read it. And I still don't understand what the film, <laughs> what the film is in it to a certain degree, which is, which is its design. And I love that about it. Um, so, so I think it's about mutual beneficiality. So mm. for instance, there are things that I've been, that I've been offered in the past where I read and I, and it had all of the elements for, you know, that by, you know, conventional standards of success, or I know lots of actors would have these stories, but like, and, you know, you have an agent or something saying, how could you not do this? This is a no brainer. This is going to give, this is like going to set you up in the most crude way. This is going to set you up for an Academy award or Mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, thankfully I haven't been for whatever reason, I haven't been tempted to take work for those reasons. And always, and of course I'm in the privileged position where I don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I have the ability to, to say yes to what, what feels right to me. I know that's a, a real privilege that I found myself landed in, but, um, but then I, I know that someone else is meant for that role as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know that like, mm-hmm. And, and I've been proven right every yeah, time, like yeah. I, even, even in so far as, as, as reading it and saying, thank you so much for this offer. And I, on paper, you're going to think I'm, I understand you think I'm crazy for, for saying no, but I, I know a guy who could really, who could really do this. <laughs> um, and I know a guy who could really, who could really bring something to it with passion. And, you know, one time that's resulted in, that person winning an Academy Award and, and uh, two other times it's resulted in nomination, like all this, like, and it's, I'm just so, I, but I love that. I love that I have my own secret right. kind of um, relationship to someone else's right. divine kind of like externally successful moment that's mm. very special for them. And I, I, I feel very like, like secretly like, oh, that's wonderful that I, that I, I'm, I'm a small part in that. And I trusted trusted myself and I didn't let my own, I don't know, like, it's not that my ego never gets the better of me. It does. Like I, I can be mercenary and it's, but, but I, I try to stay in that kind of internal ethical integrity alignment place, which, and, and imperfectly I'm listen imperfectly. Like it's never, it's never easy to do that, but I, I but, it, but when it, when I do it, it's uh, it always results in something magical happening. Isn't it scary how intuitive this whole thing is? <laughs> scary. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. I mean, why, why scary? Meaning like what happens when you're not in tune mm-hmm. with that anymore? Right. Or, or when you're second guessing yourself, Yeah. start to begin to second guess yourself, which it doesn't seem like that's happening. Um, I'm just projecting on you now. Cause I'm a, no, second, it I'm a second guesser, you know? Oh no, I, 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 I am too. I can, I absolutely am and can. And yeah, you're right. It's, I guess what you mean, what maybe this, why it's scary is that it's so easy to miss the intuitive moments. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. because we've, we've been programmed yes. to kind of value the left brain far more than the right, than the right brain to put it crudely, I suppose. Yes. Um, and we've been miseducated to believe that the, that the left brain is far more reasonable, rational and in touch with reality. But, you know, studies now have shown that actually, yeah. you know, I think they, they did, like, they did, like, I read about a study in, in stroke victims and when the, the left brain um, remains and the right brain undergo and has the stroke and kind of shuts down, that's when psychosis happens. I'm, mm. I'm maybe making this up. I don't know, but there's an inability to deal with reality as it is. There's a, there's, mm. there's a, there's a, re- it's, it's much harder to function in the world um, to function in reality as it is. Whereas when the left brain shuts down and the right brain remains, it, it's not panicked. Right. It's, it's, it's cause it's in touch with the everything. Cause right. it's in touch with, cause it's, it's, it's more about the things that matter, the things that matter. And also, it can it, the right brain can hold reality in a way that is not overwhelming whereas the left brain is all about 
is more about rules and rigidity mm -hmm. and separation. Whereas the right brain knows everything is connected and there is no such thing as me. There's no such thing as you. Like it's mm -hmm. that, it's that not, it's that wisdom, that intuitive place that mm -hmm. if we're lucky enough, that flow, I guess people will call it flow, Whoa. that flow place that we can get to um, no matter what it is we're doing, whether it's, you know, you know, this particular craft or otherwise mm -hmm. um, that, and it's a lot to do with play as well. Like I love that. I was talking to my, this guy, this wonderful actor today about, about play. And he was like, you know, I, I realized, I realized very early that I'm, I'm not interested in being a success. I'm interested in the moment of play with another mm. actor, with another and being present to that moment of play, that's what makes me enjoy being alive. Yes. And uh, that's kind of uh, where that play lives, I think is far more irrational and, uh, and uh, as you say, intuitive. And yeah, it is scary because we, we, we do, you know, we're the only ones in the way of, of um, what we're meant to be doing here. Exactly. I, think. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's tricky. It's tricky to, but do you have way, have you figured out any ways of kind of overriding or circuit breaking or? Um... No, no, I haven't, but I know the ways. I don't want to do mm. them. <laughs> you know, it involves like, you know, I think meditation helps and, and mm -hmm. really, and really tuning out, mm -hmm. getting off your phone and, and all of this, yeah, yeah. you know, tuning back into the other frequency. Yeah. I think it's different for everyone though, don't you think? Like we all have, yes. there are specific practices that will work for you that will have no connection with like, I'll try and meditate yes. and I'll just, you know, I'll be like, oh, there's my father. Oh, there's my first gut, first love. Oh, there's my, there's the football game I lost when I was 12. Fuck this. And I, it's like, it's not, <laughs> two minutes in. That's not going to help. But like, but it might work for you. But like, yeah, I like, I had a friend who was like, who always talks about this. He's this brilliant mythologist guy and uh, his name is michael mead i call him a friend but he's more um, a teacher and uh he's just absolutely brilliant he's a mythologist in in the vein of like joseph campbell kind of thing mm -hmm. um and he you know he talks about the art, arts and practices are the way back to our that intuitive uh, inner soul that path makes sense. however you want to frame it yes and 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 for and and he's and he, he also says something really wise about it he's like you know i have to change mine up I'll go ocean, I'll go deep water, cold water, ocean swimming that wow. for a period of time for like 11 years, that got me back into my writing flow or wow. whatever. And then after oh, at a certain point, it just stopped working. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And actually he just, you know, the practice didn't have the same effect anymore. Mm -hmm. He had to, he had to find his way to something that, that did work. Well, I, I don't know what it was, but whether it was dance or, or, or yeah. meditation or, or reading or study or um, I don't know, woodworking, whatever it yeah. is, it can, it can come in any form, but you're right. I think, again, it goes back to that thing of it's so easy. We have every opportunity in the world to have a meaningless time here Yes, and to pick up these devices and to, um, to, to get to, to lose, you know, time, the preciousness of our time here and the kind of the preciousness of our attention and I struggle with it too, dude. Like I, I, I I'm, I, I think it's, I think you would have to be a monk to not have some form of missing the mark on this. Like it's, it's, yes. you know, it's tragic, but um, I'm fascinated with that in terms of discipline, like in terms of, yes, I, I don't, yeah. And, and obviously when you're on a film set, it's much easier when you're, on, when you're on a stage, there's no, that's why it's so sacred because, you know, you're forced into the ritual you're forced right. into the deep self rather than, um, uh, and that's why like, I, you know, phones on film sets now, it's like a, it's that, that's a whole nother oh. little twisty challenge to try to figure out. It's like, how do you, because people are addicted, we're all addicted now. And, and it's, and it's hard to say, you know, we're on, a, it's a no phone, no phone set, it, it, but it, it takes away, it disturbs, that kind of sacred atmosphere, but yes. you know, I, not, not that I, I'm not being holier than that. Like I'm on my phone when I'm in my trailer and I'm on my phone in between takes and whatever, like I I'm addicted like everybody else, but yeah, there's all the opportunity to, to miss, to miss this moment. And, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really mostly interested in how not to do that. And, you know, 
this this work that we get to do is and a conversation like this is a great way of kind of um it's a good practice an older gentleman friend of mine was Mm -hmm. writing a book i think he still is writing a book on um death of a salesman and um he talked to arthur miller and he talked to dustin hoffman maybe he'll give you a call one day I, I saw him every week on the job I had, and he said, I saw Death of a Salesman. I said, oh, my God, Philip Seymour Hoffman. He said, you got to go and see the guy that plays Biff. Oh, man, wow. And I didn't know you really, you know, by name back then. Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't think he did. He just said the guy <laughs> that plays Biff. But Philip Seymour Hoffman is a guy that I ask everybody about. They got a chance yeah. to work with him. Like, what yeah. did you take from that? guy mm. just observing him and getting to work with him oh gosh i mean i'm I, I, i'm etern- i'm gonna eternally be unpacking that experience with him that experience generally working with miller uh, in terms of you know his words and his ideas not him personally obviously but working with you know him in print him in play form that play is one of those uh, bone shaking, profound, primordial pieces that is just undeniable. Like I saw a terrible, I saw a really shitty version of it somewhere mm. like a few years previous. And it, I was still sobbing at the end because the power <laughs> of funny. the words, the yeah. power of the ideas, and there's something eternal that he tapped into with um, fathers and sons. And uh, oh my God. And just, a life of meaning and uh, a life of value, what that means. <sighs> God, that play. So for it to be Phil, who was and remains in my top favorite actors of all time, hero, godlike figures in my imagination, it, it, it was, of course, just an unbelievable privilege to watch him create this character. I think one of the things that remains so um, kind of astonishing to me was the impossible compulsion towards the deepest possible truth of every single moment. Emotional, psychological physical truth which in this case was about going down into the the darkest deepest most murky messy part of the woundedness of the character and the wound of the culture um the wound of the culture that Miller was writing about, the wound of man in that culture. And to watch this titan of acting and Phil humble himself and make himself so vulnerable to the job he knew he had to do in order to play this part and him and to watch him struggle and wrestle and fight it and find that deepest of darkest places that he found it was oh just devastating and of course it was hard for me to be objective during that period because i was trying to develop a relationship between my character and and his between the father the son and the father so my job was really to perceive him and what he was doing through the eyes of my character Mm -hmm. and through the eyes of Biff. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I'll never, I'll never ever, it's, it's uh, seared into my memory, in my body, in my heart is getting to kneel in front of him as Willie Loman every night. And as we as we hold on to each other for dear life in one of those final that final big revelatory scene in the play, and just tr- us just trying to force our souls upon each other and 
the lines that I have are, I'm nothing, Pop. I'm nothing. Can't you see that? Basically saying, like the archetypal son to the archetypal father, see me, see me, accept me and mm -hmm. let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Mm -hmm. And his response is, he loves me. My son loves me. He cares about me. And the, the, so the beauty of that, like that we, that we both had to get to that very raw and naked wounded place of pure terror and awe together every night. And sometimes we would hit it. Sometimes we would miss it. Sometimes mm. it would be somewhere in between, mm. but the fact that we got to attempt that and attempt to just push our souls together every night yeah. and let them wrestle and, 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 and hug and, 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 and merge and heal in, in that to attempt to anyway, you know, that's, that's mysterious stuff that I'll never, I'll never be able to, um, explain what that is but I, i'll 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 have it i'll have it in my body forever i'll have it in my bones forever so it's, it's that that i feel most kind of grateful for with with phil just a quick note mr garfield warned me about a wood chipper that was making a lot of noise outside his window throughout the day that he was worried would make a terrible sound during our interview and i wasn't worried about it because i thought you know, how loud can it really be? Uh, but it ended up being pretty loud. So for the next 15 minutes, uh, the degraded sound you hear on his end is from me just trying to get rid of that wood chipper sound in the background. The good news is it only lasts uh, 15 minutes. Sorry about this. What's the ideal kind of director that works best for you? if you could build one and, and <laughs> around, you know, as a side question, what did working with Fincher so young do toward your like evaluation of all these directors that came after? Yeah. I mean, like, it's not a side question. It's, it's definitely part of the same question. So it was formative in terms of film, film acting. It was the first time, that I felt unrushed, unhurried, unpressured to really explore that thing of spontaneity, to really explore that thing of being alive while the camera is rolling and how that is the most important thing, that you're not trying to get it right, that you're not mm. trying to figure out what the scene should be or, you know, ticking a bunch of boxes or, but actually that you prep that because I, I, I love, I love my prep. So I, I arrive prepped ready to roll. And then, but then to have the freedom that he afford that Fincher affords you to, to be present, to do that thing that, that we fall in love with actors doing like when we, the revelation that Brando was in streetcar named desire, like when we saw, a live animal on screen and what Brando is doing, a kind of, a, a, a lack, a, a not thinking of what the next moment is, but just a pure animal presence and not knowing where the scene is gonna go, not knowing, like, you know, it's the first time this has ever happened and it just happens to be being captured on, on film. Mm -hmm. That, that was profound and revelatory because it was like, oh fuck, this is, this is it, this is it. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first screen test I ever did, the first time I was really on camera, it was for a screen test back in London for a, 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 what well, was attempted to be a film adaptation of The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. Mm. And uh, I was screen testing with, um, I was doing, I was doing, working with um, Andrea Riseborough at the time, we were at the National at the time, and I, they, for whatever reason, someone had come and seen me and Stephen Daldry's people had come and seen me in a play in, in that play. And they, and they, they were casting Cavalier and Clay and they were like, here's an unknown kid, that kid from the national, uh, he's, you should get him into test for, for one of the roles. And it, 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 he took a chance. So I, I, I got to have two days of screen testing with some amazing 
slightly older actors than me, like great, great actors that I, I have, had admired and still admire. And there was one in particular that will, that again, it was a similar revelation. It was Ryan Gosling. And I got to test with Ryan playing these cousins in the, the, in the book, Joe Cavalier and Sam Clay. And his, I was like, oh, that's that Brando thing. That's, oh, I have never seen it up close and personal and, and take to take it's different. He's improvising, he's doing physical behavior that hmm. is surprising and expresses so much more than dialogue. It's, and I, and, and I was just like, I was gaga. I was just like drooling. And, and because of that, I was a, I, I was, I, I just fell, I fell into that flow, that flow, mm-hmm. that really uh, in, in, instinctive, impulsive, intuitive process so 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 i got to i felt like for the first time ever well more so than ever because i i felt like i i i had found some version of that with uh, uh, the, the films that i'd done previous to social network but there's always time pressure and there's always you know are we that we're losing the light or blah 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 that's that's inevitable but with fincher because he does so many he, he spends his money on time and he spends his money to allow the actors to find that moment of liminal space, that moment of not knowing, that moment where the words don't mean anything anymore and you're so tired and you've forgotten your person, you've forgotten there's a camera, you're just uh, kind of in that very open, vulnerable place is what he's look- he seems to be looking for a lot of the time um, in, in his actors. And you go home every night and you go, oh, nothing better than you've left it all on the field. Mm. That feeling of exhaustion, that good tired, that where you go, well, it's got to be in there somewhere. But I remember I was walking around back, uh, back in, around Video Village one a day I wasn't shooting, just kind of watching. And, you know, him, him and his, um, his videographer, his video, and his videographer, the, the guy who runs Video Village. Um, and I remember they were doing, I don't remember what scene they were doing, but it got to take... 14 and i heard finch go okay that's a cut and he turns to his video guy and he goes, okay first print delete takes one through 13 <laughs> and i'm like i'm like in the background he doesn't know i'm there and i'm just like like heartbroken for the actors yeah. that had just done 13 takes and i'm like it wasn't one part of that that worked like there must have been something Please. but it's so but, it, but it's incredible but like he's but he has that brilliance of vision that, that brilliance of mind, that brilliance of instinct, where he goes, where it hits the catcher's mitt, mm. and it's straight, and he, it's like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. It's like the golf swing. It's like you know, mm-hmm. you know the moment where, like, apparently with golfers, I don't golf, but you know, it's that thing, and he has it. And so, I, I would say, in terms of an experience with a director, that was pretty near perfect. Um, and it wasn't only down to the director; it was down to the actors. I was, it mm. was down to Jess, Jesse, and it was down to whoever else I had. You know, I was having scenes with. It was mostly J- Jesse and Justin, and uh, and uh, you know, so so. But yeah, David, fuck man, never yeah, to feel safe, to feel held, contained, safe, mm-hmm. and like you trust that 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 the, 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 the person who's making the ultimate decision at the end of the day about the edit and about the story to to know that they. They are better than you. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing more reassuring than um, really having admiration for the person that you're working for. And because, because I think at best for me, the relationship between actor and director is, I'm gonna give you all of my soul, and you're gonna use my soul to make the best possible version of this story. Please just do that. Please just use every bit of vulnerability, passion, shame, anguish, joy, hilarity, uh, whatever it is, take it all. I give it all to you, but please just use it, use it, use it respectfully and in service of making this story as emotionally touching for an audience and healing that's all that's all i want but did you ever come across somebody that you didn't want to give your whole soul to in that way or didn't trust that they were going to use 
yes. it in the way you're yes. talking about. Yes. But I still have no choice but to give it all. But yeah, then there's then there's then there's some heartbreak and it's mm. it's not uh that's inevitable. Like, you know, not everyone is 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 Fincher, not everyone is is Scorsese or Mel Gibson, you know what I'm saying, or John Crowley, like or, or Spike Jones or Mark Romanek. Like it, like it's not it's not always gonna happen. And and that's okay. We're all I do believe we're all doing our very, very best and there are everyone has their own limitations, including me. So I, I I try to I try to I try to only work with people that I, I can do that with, I can mm-hmm. feel in, in tr- trusting with. And I always go into a project believing that that will be the case. Um, but then, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen and that's okay. That's really okay. Like we're all doing our best and we're all on our own as you know as you as this, this is as this is obviously a, a big healing component of this for you it's like we're all unfolding to our potential all the time if we're you know if if that's where our intentions are trained lee pace was on the show and he said flatly that you know angels in america was not fun it was not fun. It was amazing. <laughs> it was life changing. He d- couldn't even process it yet. It was that amazing. But it was not fun. And you've said similar <laughs> things. Traditionally fun. Whatever we think fun is, you know, like oh, light. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, go on. What's your question? But I would love you to take us through a day that was <laughs> bad. Oh, bad. <laughs> and what you did to rally. I'm talking about a day that you didn't want to go on the stage and, and have to do oh, this. Yeah. And what Although did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to rally? You, you, I mean, what do you, what do you do? <laughs> ah, I love that Lee was like, it wasn't fun. <laughs> I love Lee and I love what he did with that role. And I also love what Russell Tovey did with the role in london oh okay so fucking hell dude so <laughs> i i all I, I like i i so when so when we finished angels in new york i was like okay i'm done i don't need to do shit anymore <laughs> like i like i don't yeah. want to do anything ever again <laughs> like it was like ridiculous so like and that, so, so what I think what I mean by that, how it relates to your question, is there were so many days, not only where I was like, I don't want to do this. It was, I literally physically cannot. <laughs> like I was convinced that I could. And I have, an, I have I, you know, I, I have, like we all need, I have incredible people in my life. I have great teachers, mentors, an inner circle of people of artists that really have my back that will that will say hard stuff to me if they need to or if i'm if i'm veering off my truest path they will not hesitate to pull me up i'm very lucky in that way i don't have people to tell me yes i don't have that's something that I've, I've cultivated a bunch of people that will call me out on bullshit and i feel like it's really important for any of us as human beings especially on an artistic path like so I have a person in my life and she's a legitimate um, spiritual guide, teacher, artiste, just, just an incredible human being. And, and so I, when I would have those days, which were plentiful, I would speak to her, I would text or we would speak and I would sometimes be on the verge like that, of that kind of wobbly chess, like mm. feeling that ex- level of, exhaustion like you're about to have to climb Everest again kind of it reminds me of that moment in uh, in Hacksaw Ridge where the character does all the heroic shit on the on the ridge comes back down gets welcomed back into the fold and then it's like he gets cleaned up and then the next day he's just sat chilling he's reading his bible 
he's got he's got he's, he's cleaned up face he's got cuts and bruises it's just peacefully just like coming down from the whole experience and reading his bible his sergeant comes over um and says i i i know who you i see you now i'm sorry i didn't see you before i'll never forgive myself and i'm just like, oh that's all good and then he's like we have to go back up tomorrow <laughs> And it's like, and you can see in the character in that moment that it's just like, like it's almost like a, there's a there's like an internal twitch. It's like, a, do I run, uh, or like a kind of like the, the there's like PTSD, like genuinely PTSD for that character that he's he hasn't even begun to process yet. And it makes me think of like someone like my brother, who's um, a, a pulmonary, a lung doctor in London. Mm. And what he's literally going through right now, being uh, a doctor with the NHS and and someone that's quite accomplished and at a high at a uh, position of, of leadership in his hospital in in central London, and at one day of dealing with COVID patients, and then knowing that he has so like me talking about doing a play every day feels slightly. You know, pathetic compa- comparing to to him having to go back into mm. the battlefield every more every morning and try his best to save as much life as possible, and that's what he's been doing for a year and a half mm. now, mm-hmm. for a year and a, and a and a month, and so it's that feeling of, and he's had his moments, and he's shared them with me. I've been lucky enough, privileged enough that he's allowed himself to be vulnerable with me and kind of say, I, you know, had, had his moments of like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to go back tomorrow. I don't think I can. Mm-hmm. And I, I said the same thing to him that my, my, one of my teachers said to me, it was like, so don't do it. Mm-hmm. So just don't. And what she meant was you have to start relying on some spiritual help. Mm-hmm. Like the guy did on Hacksaw Ridge, like, you know, my, my my brother has had to do on certain moments and certain days and to and just to, to just kind of say i can't do this if if you want me to do this you better help me whoever you are whatever you are wherever you are my reserves the you know the reserves of energy the the kind of or spiritual help angelic help you know higher higher self higher power god um the, you know uh nurses, uh, Mm -hmm. other actors. Like, so for me, I can, I'll speak for myself. It was, it was, I, she said that to me and I was like, Oh, I don't know, man. It feels a little wishy washy, but you know what? Like uh, I had no choice because I knew I, I knew I had to go on stage because that was my job. And it was weird. There was some of the best shows I had because I was so out of the way Mm. and I was so, I was so like, I can't, (laughs) you can, I'll let you. Right. And, and then suddenly I was able to just absorb so much more energy from my fellow actors Mm. because I was much more permeable and open. I wasn't working so hard Right. and I was, it, at that point, so it was in my bones, in my body, the, the show, and it was just much more, in, it was it was a different level of intuition that was happening. Kind of like, you know, what my what my brother describes when he's getting out of the way when he's at work, kind of like what mm-hmm. I imagine Desmond Doss would have felt on the top of, Hacks, of, of Hacksaw Ridge. Like, I can't, you can, I'll let you. There's no way in hell. So on that film, you know, when it came to that sequence of, dragging the bod- dragging the, the the men to the edge and lowering them down with the rope. Of course, I'm like, I'm going to do it for real. I'm going to do every one of them for real. We get to the first guy that I'm supposed to drag, who's like slightly bigger than me, but not like hugely. And I'm strong at this point. Like I'm wiry, but like I've been training, I'm strong. I try and drag the motherfucker and like, I get like five yards and I'm like, put him on a fucking wire and I'll be grunt. Magic. And... I have no shame about it because it, it needs to look like I have this 
superhuman strength, which this guy did. Right. And you think about it how, with the, with the eighty seven bodies, eighty seven guys that he, it's, he saved. It's, yeah, it's, it's there's not no of this way world. a human being can do it. It's not of this world. Like, yeah, like yeah. like it's it's that it's that shit of like mothers lifting. I was just thinking that. I was just gonna say that from when yeah. their children when the children are, are stuck. Are it's underneath. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. that. It's something else that happens. Yeah. And I think for my brother, that's what he um, he's had to learn. And I think, you know, he struggles with it because he likes to think that he can, you know, we all like to think that we can, we should be able to handle everything. But, uh, but there comes a certain point where we reach a limit. And, I, you know, I've, I've, I've seen it with myself and I've seen it with him. And it's... Um, so yeah, yeah, those days, those days were really hard, but yeah, it was, it, they became quite profound because they became quite weirdly light. Like I didn't, like I, I, I didn't have to work so hard. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and I hear what Lee is saying. Like it, it, I would, I would say, and I'm sure I know he would agree like the, what that show gave us, I'll speak for myself, what that show gave me is in perpetuity now. Like it will never, mm. If I, again, it's that similar feeling of the, the, what I described with the moments I shared with Phil on stage. Getting to work with those people on that play every night for a year and a half, pretty much, lives in me in a way that will never, it's eternal now. It's just in me. It's just like, it's part of my DNA and my emotional makeup and um, my bones and and like, there's so much solace I get from that play, mm. even now. Mm. There's so much wisdom I get from it. There's so much comfort. There's so much joy. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm indebted to the experience. I'm indebted to those actors and to Tony Kushner and Marianne and, you know, it, that theater. The, it's just that, that, that it was a real, it doesn't get much better. Then those two experiences, then Death of a Salesman with those people and Angels in America with those people. I'm assuming that the um, formation of the character for mainstream was a little different because you kind of built it with Ms. Coppola in, yeah. in, in, in a way. Um, yeah. Talk to me about that. Um, yeah. Yeah and how that was different and and i i mean you, you you did something in that that was wonderful for me which was a lot of these a lot of characters like this i don't believe that they have this like um uh, pied piper kind of thing i don't believe in the pied piperness of them i don't believe people would follow them there's something like there's something right. performative about about it yeah. usually that i'm like that's not mm. this was different so like it like whatever you oh, were doing cool. it felt like like this kind of character had that authentic attraction going on in that. That's very kind of you. And that was something that I was really worried about, actually, that very specific thing. And I would talk to me and Gia would talk a lot about it. I'm like, it, 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 we need the, 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 this falls apart. If we don't, yes. if we don't think, if we, if we don't go, oh yeah, I see, I see that seduction happening. Um, and I, I, you know, it's a little bit like watching, you know, the, the, the Nixium documentary um, that, you know, the, yeah. the, the stuff about like Heath Raniere or yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Those, those kinds of characters where you're like him, yeah. <laughs> how did, but, but you look at it and you're like, yeah, kind of, I get it. Like he is weirdly beguiling and hypnotic and anyway. So yeah, that was really important. So, so you with this, you know, I was so happy when Gia asked me to come and come and play, basically come and come and help because she'd been working on this herself for a, a bunch of years, like five or six years, as something that she needed to get out, get out of her system to express. And she, and you know, we have very similar views on the current state of the culture and this, our own personal struggles within it. And, you know, on the macro level, you know, we love facing the crowd, we love network, we love all these kind of satirical things that are entertaining, but also sneak a little bit of like, a bit of a, 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 a mirror of medicine up to the audience and go, well, where are we and where are you and all this? And is this how you want to be living? And is this who you want to be following? Um, and how does that occur? How does that happen? So that, that was really kind of the basis of, of the thing. And for me, I was just so excited because 
she's my she is my friend i really really care about her and i really believe in her as an artist and i i was given the opportunity to help her get her film made and to help her to help her make it happen and in return uh again mutually beneficial i got to explore these themes and i got to explore i got to experiment with a character that i'd never played before on screen yeah. and i got to experiment in a very safe place with friends and kind of play especially there was like two two of the four weeks of, of shooting were so joyous because there was no such thing as wrong for 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 me in this character i like i i was given i kind of gave myself and was given by Gia just free reign to just explore and experiment and, ex and, and, and experience the worst impulses. <laughs> I will label them as bad, but like the most self-centered, narcissistic, manipulative, outlandish, grotesque, provocative, Milo Yiannopoulos style kind of part of myself. Yeah. And I, you know, in a safe, in a way that was in service to my friend making her film. Like, mm. like that was so cool, man. And like, I'm just so grateful for that experience. And again, it was like one of those pressureless kind of, you know, we, we, we were making a movie that was an experimental art film and, and with, with themes that we cared about and just throwing it at the wall. And uh, I'm just really, I just had a great time. I don't know if you were joking when you said that Mike Nichols said to you, you're always going to be okay because you're always going to loathe yourself. <laughs> I, it wasn't so harsh as that. <laughs> but I understand but, this somehow. I mean, like this, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know if people yeah. can understand that. This, and yeah. it, it makes sense. And I know what he was saying and I know yeah. what he meant. And, and yeah. I guess Mike, Mike, I'm not so much worried about you that you loathe yourself. Like I'm, I, I think I, I share Mike's uh, <laughs> not <laughs> non non worry, but I'm worried yeah. ab about you because I think maybe you loathe where this business is going. And I, you know, and how much is that worry of mine substantial? Mm. Uh, oh, um, so sweet to be concerned for me. <laughs> well, only I'm only concerned selfishly because. I want you to be the oh. artist, you know, that you seem to be building so kind, and, 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 and doing. That's you know? so I kind. Mean, that is such a kind thing to say. And I appreciate that. And I want the same for you. Just so you know, like, I want, I want, I, I want the same for anyone who wants, who has a deep desire to be an artist. And that is such a beautiful self, selfless thing to say. And it's mutual, dude. Like, I fucking... I see you and I appreciate you. Thank you for saying that. It's very generous and kind. Um, I, I think first of all, to put your heart at rest, if it is a true concern, I'm, I, I, I'm only, I, I'm not going, I'm not going to do anything that I, I don't need to do. So I, I, I'm going to stay doing what I, and I'm, you know, I finished angels and I, I was like, well, I guess I'm done, but, uh, just when you think you're out, they reel you back in. Uh, it's, I've, you know, I, I, I fall in and out of love with this in, in, uh, in lots of different iterations. And yeah, part of it is there are, there are aspects of the business and of the industry that are, are displeasing and that, that don't, that don't help things. But I remember Tony Kushner said, you know, when we were at some Tony, Tony award function, <laughs> I say it dismissively. But it's very beautiful to be honored in that way. And very, I'm very grateful for it. But, you know, we were at a dinner or something. And he was like, you know, it's like this is puni This is the punishment for making something that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. It's like you can't just make something that's good and go to bed. You have to like, yeah. They have to parade you around. They have to drag you around. Yeah. And you have to like put on makeup and like be charming and all that bullshit that it takes effort. Yeah. and work for someone like him. Um, not that it takes effort and work for him to be charming. It's just that he just wants to do the work. He is naturally charming and wonderful. But um, so I think, so I've been thinking, I think about this a lot, this question, what you're saying of like, you know, despair at where the culture is going, despair at where the world is going. And, but then there's so, but then you, you look, you watch Nomadland or you watch Minari 
and uh, or zero zero zero, or um, call my agent, mm-hmm. or uh, you know, dare I say it, Cobra Kai, and uh, <laughs> I run the gamut, dude. Like I'm oh I, I, octopus, my octopus teacher. Like I like yeah. I, you know, there's always gonna be great things. There's always gonna be great work, and there's and 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 that's. Uh, I think I think I've been humbled a lot in the last couple of years from thinking that I knew better than I did about about life and about the culture and about the world and about where things are going, where things should be going, and blah blah blah. I think I, I've been really humbled these last couple of years because of some personal stuff that's happened um, after finishing Angels, a big a big loss in my life that I lost someone very 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 close to me. Mm. very important to me and it 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 has shifted and i'm sure you you understand what i'm what i mean mm-hmm. it shifts and it expands your psyche and the landscape that you perceive the world to be and suddenly you realize everything you thought you understood and knew is in fact was in fact an illusion and you have to read yeah I, i've been having to readjust to a new way of looking a new way of living mm-hmm. a new way of um understanding how to live and what life's about um so in that humility i think i've i've kind of gone i don't know i don't know anything actually like i know i know less than nothing Mm -hmm. and and the idea that yeah i mean of course i i get disappointed at certain things that we keep on sanctifying the mistake in certain ways in our culture you know donald trump being the kind of the main symptom of that the most visible symptom of that of the last however many years um but for me i'm i think i'm moving more into uh again a more hum a more humble pose of i don't know i don't know where you know i mean so this is going to sound so pretentious but i've been thinking about the perspective of the moon <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. you know like especially during this time of of quiet and solitude that we've all been going through in our own way and this kind of uh, this inability to be out you know slaying dragons in the world you know i've been thinking i've been thinking like looking at the moon a lot and i've been going the shit you've seen and you're probably Mm -hmm. just looking down at humanity right now going Oh, right. They're going through this again. Huh. I wonder if they'll make, Oh yeah, they're doing the same shit. Oh, right. Oh, and these Oh, great. This is all good. Oh, now everyone's, you know, marching. That's fucking cool. I wonder if it's going to, no, not really making much. Oh, maybe it's making a bit of difference. Oh no, it's pretty much the same as last time. Oh, I remember the March of 19 tickety two, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, and the moon is just going, well, you know, they, 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 they used to not be here. (laughs) <laughs> those mm. those uh bipeds and mm-hmm. now they are here and then um they're not they won't be, be here, here soon <laughs> yeah sooner or later they're going to be gone yeah there's a really lovely story that i keep i always come back to when this kind of conversation comes up and it's um it's a story it's a i think it's a mayan creation story myth and i'll just kind of like um I'll like really quickly just sum it up. Create a God created all the planets, the galaxy, the universe, the blah, 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 and created earth and created the streams and the water and the fire and the elements and the wind and, blah, 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 and the, created the animals and created the blah, 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 you know, blah, 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 trees and whatnot. And he looked at all creation and he was like, this is gorgeous. <laughs> And a miracle. Like I, I have created something so m- massive and mysterious and an ecosystem that operates and works. And there's something missing. And then he made human beings with one very simple purpose to give thanks and praise for the creation. Mm. I always come back to that. And I feel like that, when in doubt, find a way to give thanks, find a way to praise mm. this miracle, the the mystery of the miracle of being alive. Like I, I love, I love Daniel Kaluuya. I love, uh, you know, I remember seeing him on stage when he was a kid and 
getting 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 to say I, I had just done Spider-Man I think and I, I think we were both really excited to meet each other and like I just love him and I th- he's a force you know he's a, yes. he's a force of nature on stage and on screen and I'm so happy that he's you know he's 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 making the work that he's making uh, inevitably he was it was never going to be a, a, a anything else but like I lo- like I, when he in his in his Oscar speech when he was like yeah. man <laughs> I just love, I'm alive. We're alive. And it's a, it's mad and it's a miracle. I'm paraphrasing, yeah. but like, you know, my mom and my dad had sex and I'm here. And like, how cool is it that I'm just here? I'm so glad that I'm here. Let's just keep doing it. Let's just keep going. Like it's that, like it's the simplicity of, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, we're here. Fuck. Well, let, let's do this. <laughs> like let's make beauty and let's, Give praise and thanks and be awake to the fact that this is a crazy miracle and deeply mysterious that we're all able to live and breathe on a rock floating through space. Like, let's just, let, let's make sense of that through the art we make. That would be cool. Um, and try to avoid anything that takes away from the, the mi- miracle and mystery of that. Andrew Garfield, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> much thanks peter thanks dude this is great i love what you're doing i'm excited to go and listen back to one is a production of filmmaker magazine which is a publication of the gotham formerly ifp listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts